When it comes to scanning film, there are multiple ways to get good and usable results. The first and most basic method is to use a traditional film scanner. This seems to be the most popular and also the most straightforward. Secondly, another method that has been getting a lot of traction these days is using a digital camera along with a macro lens. In recent years, this has become very popular for its quick and good results. But what if you're just starting out and you don't have all of the fancy equipment? Is there still a way to be able to get good results while using minimal amounts of equipment? Well, today we are going to find out. In this video, I'm going to explore an option that pretty much anybody can try, utilizing the single most powerful tool that pretty much everyone on this earth owns. Today, we are going to be attempting to scan film with your phone. Now, depending on the type of phone you have and also the different equipment that you have lying around, uh, results will vary. But in this video, I will try my best to just achieve the best results using what I already have. Will the phone sensor be able to pick up enough detail and sharpness to be able to make a scan after cropping? That's going to be our main question for this video and basically what we are trying to figure out today. So here's a quick little rundown about how I'm going to do this test. I will be scanning two images from a roll I shot and comparing the iPhone's final scan photo versus the lab scans. Keep in mind, the lab scans, they're images with professional high-end scanners, so the comparison should be night and day. For this experiment, I'm going to be using a cheap light table I got off of Amazon for 20 bucks, as well as my iPhone 12 Pro and this nifty little device called the Pixelator. This thing is very handy when scanning film digitally and it keeps your negatives nice and flat, whether you're doing it with a digital camera or even your phone. So these are all just items I've had laying around, so I want to use them for this comparison. Now, before we start, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to scanning film digitally, especially with something like your phone. Number one, the closer you get, the better. Now, this is going to be our main drawback and limitation with the iPhone. The iPhone doesn't have a built-in macro lens. The main benefit of scanning with something like a DSLR is being able to use a macro lens to get extremely close. And the closer you get, the more detail the sensor will pick up. And later on, when you crop it, it'll still retain high resolutions. Two, you need to keep your phone flat during the scanning process. When you scan film with something like a phone or even the digital cameras, you want to keep it as flat and as close to the negative as possible to avoid any type of warping or weird kind of out of bound shapes when you're cropping later on. Number three is a personal tip that you don't necessarily have to do, but on most iPhones, you can invert the screen and color so you can actually see the negative in a positive. This just helps during the scanning process to get a good idea of how your scan is going to look. Remember, this is not permanent. You're still going to need to flip the negative over into a positive in post afterwards. So with that said, let's get started scanning the film. So here we are scanning the images. I have the pixelator set up to hold the two frames I've selected and all I'm doing now is I'm just trying my best to get as close as possible, keeping my phone parallel to the table and just trying to get good sharp results. As you guys can see, I'm just hand holding my phone, um, but I'm sure if you guys want to try this out in a more controlled manner, you can set up a tripod and have your phone set on a tabletop. After a couple of tries, I found two frames that I feel like are the best and all we're going to do now is transfer them over into Lightroom and we're going to start the editing process. All right, so here I am in Lightroom and from this point on, it's the exact same thing as you would do when you're scanning film with a digital camera. First things first, you want to crop your frame. Get all of that excess out and just only have the 35 millimeter frame inside here. Make sure everything is isolated and straightened out and all the corners are inside of the frame. Step two is to adjust the curves to turn the negative into a positive. This is simply done by flipping the points to the opposite side and lining each point along the start and finish of your histogram. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about here, refer back to my scanning 35 millimeter film with my digital camera video, which I explain a little bit more in depth about this process. And the last and final step, folks, is to slightly sharpen and to add a little bit of noise reduction. Folks, this is an iPhone scan that has been cropped incredibly small. So in order to try to achieve the best results, I'm sharpening it just a little bit to see if we can get anything usable. And voila, you have your iPhone scans. All 
All right, so now that we've concluded this experiment, I wanna share my thoughts on what exactly I think about the results compared to the lab's scan. So to the naked eye, from a distance, it looks just like any other regular scan. Of course, if you want to go ahead and adjust colors, you can go ahead and do so, but to the naked eye, it looks like any other scan. That is unless you zoom in. And when you zoom in, you start to see the immense loss of detail and the sharpness and overall quality of the scan. You start to see some of the imperfections that the iPhone can't really handle. In my opinion, I think this is due to not being able to get as close as possible to the negative. This was all done with the standard wide camera and then just cropped down later on in post. So of course I expected some resolution to be lost, but when you zoom in, it does not look very good. This means you're probably gonna run into issues if you're gonna try to print this up super, super big. Compared to the lab scans, the lab scans just blow the iPhone scans out of the water. And honestly, that is exactly what I expected. I wasn't expecting too much from it. Now, if you ask me, would I recommend this method? Honestly, probably not. Low resolution scans, there's no real reason to do them in the first place. And honestly, if you're gonna take this route and you know buy this equipment, you might as well just buy a cheap little macro lens to throw on your digital camera and you're gonna get far, far better results. So I would put this in the category of maybe, just maybe if you really wanted to try it, you can go ahead and do it and get low resolution scans but I would still recommend you use a traditional film scanner, something cheap like the Epson V550, costs you about a hundred bucks, or just getting a macro lens and doing this with your digital camera. You're gonna get far better results with these two methods than using your iPhone or pretty much any other phone, folks. So that is gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this was you know, eye-opening to you and what the iPhone can do. It wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't great. And unless you have a very specific use for low resolution scans, um, I would probably avoid this. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang. All right, you guys, now before we go, this experiment was just based off of my experience. Now, the results from this will vary and I don't expect anybody else to get the same results. So comment down below if you guys have gotten any good results with it or if there's anything that I can do to improve my results. I'm curious to know, you know, what have you guys been doing? What techniques have you guys been implementing to get scans from your phone to look just as good as other traditional methods? So again, Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.